So nice to be watching these Euros and Copas as countries and teams celebrate their victories like England earlier today. Absolutely beautiful. One team that didn't give us a lot of reason to celebrate. United States men's national team. What a thud. Beat Bolivia 2-0. You thought, okay, we'll be all right. In Panama, that was just a total nasty mess. Then they go and lose to Uruguay. And earlier in the week after the match, I was watching ESPN and I actually heard from one of their analysts who I love. I think he's great in everything that he does. And I think everything that you're about to hear from him, his name is Alejandro Morina. He is a Venezuela national, played on the Venezuela national team, played in MLS for many years. Everything he's about to tell you about the United States, Uruguay, the U.S. men's national team, I think is dead spot on. But the last statement he makes is just absolutely chilling to me. So as you listen to it, check the boxes. Do you, do you agree with everything he's saying? And then at the very end, kind of hone in and think, ooh, man. So this is Alejandro Marina talking about the United States' recent loss to Uruguay. Let's unpackage the goal. Whatever we think of the technology, whatever we think of the line, that is the system that we're currently utilizing in this tournament. And so therefore, you take it for what it is. And according to that system that everybody's playing by the same system, this was decided as a goal. Now, a lot of people out there, U.S. fans, are going to go crazy. Oh, no, how could that be? All right, fine. Let, let, I'm going to give you the offside. I'm going to give you the goal. I said, no, no, you, you, listen, no goal, no goal for Uruguay. That was still, was, it still wasn't enough for the United States. And that's my point, right? You look at the stats, 0.29 expected goals for the United States in a game that they needed to win. How are you going to win a game when you're not really creating opportunities? How are you going to win a game when you're, you don't really show quality in the final third? How are you going to win a game when, if you look at your playmakers, if you look at, at your difference makers, yeah, have chances, but not more than that. And here's the other thing I'll say. Yeah, you had a disappointing result against Panama, and that set you up for failure. Let me just tell you that. That set you up for failure. And then you wanted to grind against Uruguay. And if I could pick, if I could have the choice of one team in South America, in Comebol, to grind, to grind out a result, it would be Uruguay. This is not the team that you want to grind against because they'll grind more than you. And they'll make it more physical than you. And they'll force turnovers. And they'll slow down the game. And they'll get a goal. And they'll win one nothing, And you'll be wondering, how did this happen? How did this happen? It's because they have more know-how than you do as a United States men's national team. They have more know-how when it comes to this, when it comes to grinding, when it comes to fighting, when it comes to winning this sort of matches, they know about it a whole lot more than this team does. That's what chills me right there. The United States don't have enough know-how. Physically talented, they have no identity, and they have no know how there's certain countries you know when the going gets tough they're going to find a way to win argentina they can get outplayed the whole game still don't sit there and think they're going to lose france they can get outplayed a lot still don't think they're going to lose i would say netherlands kind of fits in that category until they face somebody really really big still don't think they're going to lose because these teams have this idea and this will and this desire and this know-how to win and the united states has what's the u.s's identity uruguay known as a grind and find a way to win team Brazil, known as super talented, get out there, make it happen. Argentina, great players, great schemes, they get it going. France, super talented, sometimes a mishmash of people. Italy, the counterattack. Germany, aggressive play. England, you know, try to make crafty plays here and there. The United States has no identity. Nobody says, oh, that the U.S. team's known for what? Nothing. They don't even know how to win. Now, you can't fire Greg Berhalter. I understand that right away for the simple fact that you just brought him back and the Olympics are right around the corner. So I mean, you can't fire a coach right there like that. Nonetheless, I thought about it. There's a lot of other people, I think, that are worthy to be the United States coach than Greg Berhalter. How about we get a coach that has that knowledge, has that know-how, has that mentality to win? I wouldn't even mind if Tata Martino, to be honest with you, became the U.S. men's national coach. He's done it for FC Barcelona. He's done it for Argentina. He's done it for Mexico. He's got a little more, a little bit more know-how, it seems like, than Greg Berhalter, who, who I think of the future of this team. The future's okay. Really? On our home soil, we got booted out of the Juan Mabal Copa America. 
We need a coach, and I don't think it's here in the United States, that has the mentality of some of these South American and European teams that has that will and that know-how to win. Now, I'm not saying Tata Martino is going to become the U.S. men's national coach, but I'm saying someone along those lines. I thought that's what you were saying. (laughs) Maybe I was saying that. (laughs) Maybe I was, maybe I wasn't, I don't know. But I'm saying, like, we need one of those coaches. I thought, and I'll be honest with you, I thought we were in the right direction with Jurgen Klinsmann. He was from Germany. Then I'm happy you brought that up. See, that's why I just let you just... I let you go off because it was like, is it really the coaches, man? Because it's we've had some very good coaches that have helped develop this team and develop the develop the team where they no more laughing stocks yes. in the soccer world. But has the United States, you know, using the Tyler Hero uh, reference, have they reached their ceiling? Like it's have have they plateaued? Like if that's where they're gonna re- be at. That's where they are. They're not going to get to that next tier. We still trying to get to that next tier, which when you, when um Mer, uh, Alejandro Moreno was saying, and what you were saying is that you, they don't have the, the wherewithal, the, 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 um, the, the intelligence yet to win a tight, gr- uh, uh, tightly officiated, a grueling, hard fought win. They don't have that yet because they don't even know how to win when it's a, a, a up and down type of game. The United States don't know how to win. They win games, but they don't know how to win, especially against uh, um, um, a big opponent or a big, big opponent. Game. Big game, they don't really know how to win. They haven't, that's why it's been very difficult to beat the types of like even Mexico in some of these, um, like, like well, the US goal. No, much. well, not, a, not, not until now, but before right, it was, before that, no. they still, so it was still levels, still levels that they still got to get to. And, I don't know if it's the coaching staff because it's you've gotten some really good managers that have helped develop this national team, but when it's time for the tournaments, they don't succeed. And it's what is it? You you've changed the play. You can't you've changed the coaches, but sometimes you got to look at the plays. Yeah, I mean with Jurgen Klinsmann, at least I look at it like this: he had that mentality. He had that German tough, aggressive. Remember the year we were in that group of death? It was the United States, Ghana, Portugal. I don't want to say England. We went in there and beat Ghana. Put a put was a, that the World Cup? Yeah, put a goal on them right away. And then we lost the Britain game, which was a very hype game. And then we didn't. Um... We went, no, we went to Portugal, a game where we were going to win. We were up two one, and Cristiano Ronaldo makes a perfect pass at the last second of the game, and they get a goal that gets a tie. And then you lose. You lose to England. In that game, or was it a tie? I can't remember. Nonetheless, it was in a tie, but you never get the win that you need. But at least you go into the group of death, and you darn near win the group of death, bro. I thought we're going in the right direction. No, there. it's like I'm enough. It's like it's like giving kids, um, you know, participation awards because the parents ask for it. I spent money, and I, you know, I've dedicated all this time. He better get something. He or she better get something out of it at the end. No. It's enough about that. Yes, it was a group. Of, you need to win. You need to win. Look, that was a terrible loss that um happened last Thursday. Okay, that's a nasty loss. You should not have lost to um who was it? Panama. Panama two one. But that's another thing with coaching, and I mean you can't control players for what they do. But is there a lack of discipline right there that Tim Weah can go and punch a guy in the back of the head twice in the seventeenth minute and get kicked out of the game? That's on the player. A man down. That's on the player. There's now. no discipline. That's a player. That's a player in not using his intelligence, his smarts, having to be able to control. Coach can't control players' emotions. I understand that. No other teams are getting their guys red carded seventeen minutes in for throwing punches. At least not in these tournaments. No, I understand emotions get the most of you and everything like that. And Tim Way absolutely, I thought, handled it very adultly and saying, you know, I didn't mean to put my teammates in that position. But you did. But you did. Really bad position, too. They were up 1-0 at the time, too. I don't know. Greg Berhalter, I don't know if you've got the right culture around him. And, you know, we talk about heat culture all the time. And it starts to ring true in a lot of other sports. There needs to be maybe a different type of culture around the United States soccer. And maybe we need to bring in someone that has one of these different cultures to kind of teach us something. And the closest one is a guy right down the street in Fort Lottie Dottie by the name of Tata Martina. 
<laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. But I don't I don't know the answer. I'm not going to sit here and give you coaches or players or what we should do or what we shouldn't do. But there has to be a change in the culture. I would hope so. I mean, I've never seen the United States win a World Cup knockout round game. I didn't see them do very good at this Copa America. I've seen them in CONCACAF a couple times beat Mexico win the CONCACAF Cup. Panama. I mean, where are they right now in the CONCACAF rankings is another thing. Uh, the U.S. has got to go down right now. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, Canada. Canada's got to be. So Mexico is number one right now. United States number two. That's got to change. Canada's going to go up. Panama is definitely better than us. Costa Rica, hmm, we'll see. Let me tell you, how many teams, when the United States plays them, do you feel just like, all right, we got this? USA, Mexico, no way. Rivalry. USA, Canada, yeesh. I'm not saying USA all the way. USA, Panama, we already know about that score. USA, Costa Rica, not a given. USA, Jamaica, 